if I went back and probably looked at my transcripts from the first six, maybe more, meetings that we had here and evaluating things and what I was hearing from residents consistently. It was standing water in places that we never had water. It was flooding in places that we never had flooding. It was building docks to code and still having them underwater. And quite frankly, you know, I know that Ian bubbled it up and the, and the real trauma that residents are suffering still with today is why we're moving expediently on this. But it's a shame because I think it was, if we had listened to the residents and not just defaulted at all times to, well, that's the standard, that's the standard, that's the standard, we may have alleviated some suffering in places that we could have seen it coming. And if we're hearing from a groundswell of residents in each of our communities that they're noticing something different in our rain patterns, our storms, our ability to clear our streets and our neighborhoods, that we listen to them, that we don't wait for an evacuation. <laughs> Even if we look at the places that got the least amount of rainfall based on this data in my district, there were still many of them that were underwater for a long time just because of, of the what we knew were the downflow of the Reedy Creek Shingle Creek Basin right there. And so it's, it's predictable, it's observable, and so we can do something about it, and I know we can. I think we have the right team right now to do it. I would just hope that between now and then, because I know these take time, mm -hmm. that we can use a really close eye and scrutinize our, um, you know, the potential hazards that we're going to be stepping into into the future.